The Quran itself confirmed that the Bible is accurate and trustworthy. We'll show you why the Arabic translation of the Bible forced the Muslims to contradict the Quran and claim that the Bible is corrupt. Last time we talked about this fundamental question, is the Bible corrupted? And why do Muslims make that claim? Well, today we are going to continue with the same topic. So this is part two of that discussion. Uh, brother Rob, uh, welcome back. And thank you so much for taking the time, as always, brother, to do this with us. What is it that we are going to talk about this time, at least for the sake of our viewers? All right. Uh, in this part two of this series, I want to bring uh, the attention to everybody. Why Muslims? Why Muslims of today, they assume, they have to assume that the Bible is corrupted. And again, without any proof from their books, without any proof from Muhammad himself, from a hadith, let's say a, a, a Sahih hadith or whatever, or from the Quran itself, where it says crystal clear that the Bible, that the Injil or the Torah or the Zabur are corrupted. So they have to re, uh, put trust in later scholars. And here's an example of such a very famous scholar. His name is Ibn Hazm, a famous theologian, a famous polymath, a historian, a philosopher, and so on. He was born, he was born in the Caliphate of Cordoba, which is present-day Spain. So he's a Spaniard, let's say, right? He uh, was born in the 10th century and he died in the 11th century in Spain, imagine, in Spain, in Cordoba. And Muslims put their trust and salvation on such people, such, uh, let's say, let, let us call him a modern scholar because he is not from the time of Muhammad. He is actually fourth centuries after the death of Muhammad in the 11th century. He came, he made the idea famous that the Bible must be corrupted because we Jews, we Christians, we remove the name of Muhammad. So the only reason for them, for the Muslims of today to call the Bible corrupted and call their prophet and Allah liars, contradict their prophet, contradict their Allah. Because remember, in part one, we showed you and we discussed that neither Allah and neither Muhammad said that the Bible is corrupted. But much later, Muslims, Muslims of today, they have to assume that the Bible is corrupted because and only because the name of Muhammad is nowhere to be found in the Bible. And that's the reason why they say that the Bible is corrupted, my friends, or beloved audience. So, and later, later, another reason for that, when the Christians in the Middle East, they started to translate the Bible in the Arabic. And here's some information on the screen, my friends, let us read it. The Arabic version of the Bible, the Arabic translation of the Bible, often called the Van Dyck version, has been common use in common use in the Arabic speaking countries, in countries like, uh, let's say, uh, Iraq, Syria, and so on. Since this translation of the New Testament was completed in March 1860, 1860 and the Old Testament in March 1865, so five years later, they also uh, finalized the Old Testament. So now we have the complete <coughs> Bible translated, let's say in the uh, in the ninth, 19th century, Muslims started to feel the heat, brother Al-Fadi. Muslims started to finally feel the heat and they said, we have to do something. Now the Arabic speaking Christians, right? And remember the Muslims are in power, yet the Christians are, now are teaching their children from the Arabic translation of the Bible. So the Muslims are, are worried because now they can show also in the Arabic that uh, Islam is false because nowhere is the name Muhammad found in the Bible. So they had to come up with new plans. Hey, we now need to teach and warn our Muslim uh, uh, audience, uh, 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 Muslim ummah, we have to teach them that the Bible is corrupted, else yep. Islam will collapse. And right? not Do only that, something, brother? Yeah. not only that, but, but because they knew their own children, the Muslim children now have access to an Arabic Bible and they'll be able to read it for themselves. And that's another reason why they were in panic mode. Exactly. And the more people started to read the Bible, the more they came to, uh, to realize that, hey, 
the name Ahmad is nowhere to be found. So we have to assume that the Bible is corrupt without any proof from the Quran, without any backup from a uh, reliable hadith from the mouth of Muhammad. And here is more. If we go, brother, and it's on the screen, we go to the early biography about the life of Muhammad by uh, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham, who edited it much later. And here's the translation for it. We go to, let's say, uh, to this page on the screen. We see, and Muslims, you are, you should be now in panic mode, and here is why. You should get worried, because the most earliest biography about the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Isham, says the following. It is extracted from what John the Apostle set down for them when he, who, John the Apostle, he wrote the gospel for them, meaning for the Christians, from the testament of Jesus, the son of Mary. Brother, did you notice something? Muslims always claim, uh, we don't know who wrote the gospel of John, but yet in the most earliest biography about the life of Rasulullah, we find that Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Isham, they are saying that John the Apostle wrote the Gospel of John. So how is the Gospel corrupted, brother? While the most earliest book about the life of Muhammad, I remember this is even older than the Quran because the Quran of today uh, uh, is not that old as the yeah. Muslims are claiming, right? Not and only that, brother. Yeah. Not only that, if you read uh, about the prophets according to Ibn Kathir, he actually quotes the story of the conversion of the Apostle Paul from Acts chapter 9 verbatim. Exactly. He uses it to try to show you that Paul used to be a heathen, used to be against Christianity, and then he converted and followed Jesus. Yeah, and the most devastating part is, brother, that the, the uh, here, Sirat al-Rasul, right? Uh, the, the biography about Muhammad is word for word, almost word for word is quoting, brother, if on the next slide, as we can show you, word for word, almost word for word, John 15, 23, again, John 15, verses 23, all the way to John 16, verse 1, almost word for word. That's right. From the Gospel of John. So how is it corrupted? Yet your most hi earliest historian, basically, Ibn Ishaq, and later Ibn Hisham are quoting almost verbatim the Gospel of John. How is this possible? How dare you to lie? Ya Muslimin, deceive yourself and try to deceive Christians in the process while your most earliest book are confirming even the Gospel of John. And not only that, confirming that it's John who wrote the Gospel of John. Did you catch it? Uh -huh. So, and on top of that, uh, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham, they make a really horrible mistake in the bottom. It says that Muhammad is in the Gospel of John because uh, the name of Muhammad is there. And Ibn Ishaq has to assume that Muhammad is the paraclete, as you see, the paraclete, meaning the Holy Spirit. So and at the same time, not only quoting the Gospel of John, saying it's the Gospel of John, John himself wrote the Gospel of John, but calling Muhammad God, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. So here he commits blasphemy, he commits sure, calling his prophet Muhammad the Holy Spirit, brother. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this idea that they're fixated on this uh, uh, notion that the paraclete means Muhammad, I don't know where they get this from. It's funny that they claim they know Aramaic, Syriac, Greek, and they don't have a clue what they're talking about, to be honest with you. Exactly, brother. So Muslims, today again we showed you that much later scholars they came because they started to feel the heat. Hey, we have to do something because the Christians are, are refuting us. We have to lie and we have to come with all kind of mental gymnastics and uh, duct taping to lie about the Bible because we can't find the name of uh, our Rasul, uh, Ahmed, in, neither in the Torah, neither in the gospel. So we have to assume that the Bible must be corrupted without any proof again without anything, no hadith from the mouth of Muhammad, no ayah from the Quran that confirms that the Bible is corrupted. Muslims, please wake up. We do not hate you. We are showing you what your books are saying. We are showing you how your scholars deceive you without any 
back up without any proof from the Islamic books, only assumption on top of assumption. Thank you for watching and God bless. Amen. Thank you, brother. A great job as always. Thank you to our viewers. And uh, we really uh, basically encourage you to uh, interact with us in the comment section. Uh, send us some thoughts and ideas about maybe other topics that we'd like for us, me and Rob, to focus on. Maybe something that you feel like you would love it if there is short videos on those particular uh, tools that uh, you can utilize. Even if you use these videos, let us know uh, how it went. If there was any pushbacks against uh, some of the stuff, keep us posted because we can always come back and even provide further evidence or even clarifications if it wasn't clear to some of you. Thank you again. Thank you, brother. This is Al Fadi. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.